So a little while ago, I did a video about rules that everyone, or at least a lot of people, get wrong when they play games of Warhammer 40k. And I got a bunch of questions on that video, a lot of which pertained to cover and the obscuring keyword. I'm working on a part two of the rules everybody gets wrong, which should be coming out shortly after this video, so stay tuned for that one if you enjoy the series. But I figured cover and line of sight from the obscuring keyword are such a big, dense topic, no pun intended, that I would cover them independently. That time the, the pun was intended, that was on purpose. What's up, folks? Welcome back to Tactical Tortoise. My name is Trevi, and we're going to be talking about some Warhammer 40k rules today. We're talking about the rules for cover and the obscuring keyword. Some terrain rules coming at you. If you enjoy this style of rules coverage, where we talk about the rules of Warhammer 40k, some weird ones in there, and how to play the rules correctly, go ahead, drop a like on the video, drop a subscribe. That really helps tell me what types of content people enjoy seeing so I can make more of that content. In this video today, I'm gonna to be going over obscuring on terrain features in Warhammer 40K and exactly how that works. I'm gonna go over the three different types of cover that terrain features can have in Warhammer. And I'm gonna go over how models get the benefits of those types of cover from terrain features. So without further ado, let's shed some light on this heavy topic and go through some dense rules while we cover the terrain keywords. Nailing it. I'm nailing it today. We're, I'm so good. He's no good to me. First up, let's talk about the obscuring keyword. Obscuring is one of the most important terrain rules to know in 40k because it often determines what you can and can't shoot at during your shooting phase. At its base level, obscuring means that line of sight cannot be drawn through the terrain feature with the keyword unless the model that you're drawing line of sight with or the model that you're drawing line of sight to are within or touching the area of that terrain. Now, keep in mind that this does not mean that you automatically have line of sight if you are touching the piece of obscuring terrain. It only means that the terrain doesn't automatically block line of sight because of the obscuring keyword you still have to fulfill all of the normal requirements for being able to draw line of sight to the target, which is essentially that you have to be able to draw an unbroken line from your model to your opponent's model without it hitting anything. Now, for the purposes of this example, we'll use this obscuring piece of area terrain here to talk about exactly how the obscuring keyword works. Now, we want to draw line of sight from our tactical marines on this side to the gene stealers on the other side. There are windows looking directly through where we can clearly draw line of sight from the tactical marines to the gene stealers. However, the terrain is obscuring. So anytime we try to draw a line of sight over the terrain and the line of sight passes over top of the terrain feature, it is blocked by the obscuring keyword. This changes if either the gene stealers are inside the terrain, in which case the space marines can draw line of sight to them because they're within it, or if the gene stealers are outside and the space marines are touching it, they will be able to ignore the terrain for line of sight as well. Now, they're able to ignore the terrain for line of sight because they are within the area of the area terrain. Within measurements in Warhammer 40,000 are inclusive, so if you are touching a piece of terrain or an area, a zone on the table, an aura, a distance measurement, you are assumed to be within it. However, some places play with specific house rules that determine when you are or are not within a piece of area terrain. So I would just make sure that you know those. A lot of places, for example, determine that you are not inside a piece of area terrain if you're not overlapping the base, which is totally fair. And if you're playing at an event or something, I would just make sure the way that they're playing their terrain specifically. Now let's change angles here and assume the Space Marines want to shoot at the Gene Stealers from this side. Obviously, there's no clean line of sight from the Space Marines to the Gene Stealers. Even if there were, it would be blocked by the obscuring terrain. So, the Space Marines bravely move up to the wall to ignore the obscuring keyword. Unfortunately for them, that's not how it works. The obscuring keyword is essentially a secondary requirement for line of sight. You have to have your normal line of sight and not have your line of sight pass over a, a terrain feature with the obscuring keyword. So, while we can ignore the obscuring keyword for our line of sight here, we still can't see the gene stealers, so you can't shoot them because we don't fulfill the first requirement of line of sight, which is being able to actually see the enemy. 
So while the obscuring keyword does make buildings block a lot more line of sight than they would naturally, you also still have to have natural line of sight, even if you're ignoring the obscuring keyword. Now, before we move off of the obscuring keyword, one last thing that I'd like to point out about its line of sight blocking properties is that it is not dependent on where the base of your model is. Unlike other types of cover that we're about to talk about later on in this video, a lot of them are based on drawing lines. I call them lines of fire between the bases of the attacking model and the defending model. Obscuring does not do that. It requires you to draw lines in the same way, but these lines are for line of sight. They're not for line of fire, and therefore you get to to draw them to any part of from your model to your opponent's model. So obscuring only blocks line of sight when the line of sight that you're trying to trace would actually go over the obscuring terrain. In this case, we have a Toxicrin, which is a friggin' enormous model and has a huge overhang off of its base that's trying to hide behind this obscuring piece of cover here. Now, unfortunately for the Toxicrine, the Space Marine that wants to shoot him with whatever special weapon he has, while the line of sight between their bases is going to be blocked by the obscuring, that doesn't matter because we're going to try to draw a line of sight to this tentacle over here, which as we can see is clearly not being traced over the base. You can even see it on TTS. This is really easy because they models have a shadow and you can just trace a line from the attacking model to the defending model. And you can see that it clearly does not pass over any part of the obscuring terrain feature. So that would mean that this poor Toxicrine would be able to be seen by the tactical marine despite the terrain intervening. A little bit of a soapbox, but that does unfortunately mean that the physically larger models that have more extravagant poses are much easier to see regardless of the obscuring keyword. And it is a little bit frustrating, especially if you're not expecting it. Sometimes your opponent can squeak line of sight when you weren't expecting it because your base was entirely hidden behind the obscuring terrain. That also technically means that if part of your model protrudes over or through a piece of terrain that is obscuring, your opponent can often draw a line of sight to it regardless of that obscuring keyword because, again, their line of sight does not have to pass through the terrain in order to reach them. A lot of people just sort of play by intent this way. They, you know, they just say... Despite the fact that my model may overhang the terrain a little bit, the intent is not to be inside the terrain, and most people are accepting of that. But it is something to watch out for, that if you have a particularly large model like this Toxicrine, he doesn't jam over obscuring terrain too far, because at that point, it's really hard to argue that you <laughs> weren't meaning your model to get seen, because uh, clearly he's he's trying to get somebody's attention. It's also important to note that since line of sight is drawn from any part of the attacking model to any part of the defending model, technically the bases of the models also count for this, and this is often the easiest place to draw line of sight from model to model. It also just sort of logistically easy on the table. It's very easy to draw a line from your model's base to your opponent's model's base with a tape measure or a laser line drawer or something like that to prove line of sight. A lot of places have house rules that say that you only use the figurine that is on top of the base for line of sight, but this is not technically how it works in the core rules. That is a house rule. And so that is something that I would check if you are playing in a new community, whether or not they count the base or the model itself for line of sight. I'd also like to note that obscuring does technically have a height requirement on it. The terrain feature in order to qualify as being obscuring needs to be five inches tall. Time to soapbox a little bit more, but these height requirements on terrain that Games Workshop had put into the rules are absolutely baffling to me. They don't actually do anything because if the terrain wasn't meant to be obscuring, you just wouldn't put the obscuring keyword on it. You and your opponent or an event organizer, somebody who makes a table, whatever, can decide what keywords to put on a terrain. So putting a height measurement on a piece of terrain makes zero sense because if it's a short thing, you just wouldn't call it obscuring. Most people ignore that requirement. If they want to say something blocks line of sight, you could just say it blocks line of sight. It's totally stupid. Let's now talk about cover, the different types of cover, what specifically gets cover, and how to ignore cover. This one's going to be a doozy, so buckle up. There are three types of cover in Warhammer 40k. Light cover, heavy cover, and dense cover. I'll talk about light and heavy cover first because they're basically the same. They both give you plus one to your armor save. Light cover applies in the shooting phase. Heavy cover applies in the fight phase. And heavy cover turns off if you charged. So if your model made a charge move that turn and would be receiving the benefits of heavy cover, it instead does not. However, if it whatever it's targeting could potentially be getting those benefits. Lots of different types of terrain apply light and heavy cover to models in different ways. 
Keep in mind that only infantry, beast, and swarm keyworded models can get cover from terrain features. So, while you can have abilities that give the effect of cover, which is identical across the board to any unit type, any type of terrain that we talk about here will only ever apply it to those three keywords. This is totally different for dense cover. So, dense cover we're going to talk about entirely differently because it works totally differently, period. Area terrain gives you cover if you're within the area of the terrain with the keyword. Makes a lot of sense. If you're touching it or overlapping it, you'll get the benefit. Obstacles give cover if you're within three inches of the terrain feature and the line of fire from the attacker passes over the obstacle. Line of fire is the term that I use to describe this rule. Games Workshop has used it a couple different places in the core rules. It's not actually called line of fire there, but that's what I'm going to call it. I hope it catches on because... It, they would save a lot of ink if they just keyworded it and, <laughs> and then used that. But essentially, effects that use line of fire tell you to trace a line from the attacking model's base to all points on the target model's base. So you pick one point on your own model's base, then draw basically a cone, I guess it's a cone of fire rather than a line, from that one point to the entirety of the defender's base. This is the selection of the attacking player, and it determines whether or not the target of your attacks gain cover from an obstacle. Essentially, if your line of fire is unbroken by a piece of terrain with the particular cover keyword, meaning that your target's entire base is clean and out in the open. So the tactical marine here would have an open line of fire to the Hormagant out in the open. However, his line of fire would be blocked by the obstacle terrain, which means that this Hormagant would be in cover from that particular obstacle. Obstacles give cover if your line of fire is blocked by them, as long as you're within three inches of them. Now, in case this is like currently burning your mind to a crisp inside your skull, I've created a handy little diagram of this situation to show when or when not the line of fire is broken. It's actually not that complicated. Once you play with it on the table one or two times, it gets really simple. And I think you'll agree, it actually plays a little bit more naturally than area terrain. I'll include a link to this diagram down below if you want to share it with your friends and explain to people how obstacles actually work. Keep in mind that this is totally separate from line of sight. Line of fire is a line drawn between the bases of the models. And as we talked about when we talked about the obscuring keyword, line of sight is a line drawn between any two parts of the models. So when you're measuring line of fire, you take only into account the two bases. But if you're measuring line of sight, you take into account any straggling piece, little claw, banner, outstretched sword. Those will all count for line of sight, but not necessarily for line of fire. Someday, I hope, we will get rid of the true line of sight rules and we'll get just use line of fire for line of sight. Please, Games Workshop, rescue me from the terrible tyranny of true line of sight. Now, this is just a matter of personal opinion, but that's one of the reasons that I enjoy playing with obstacle terrain more than area terrain, because assuming this piece of terrain is area terrain and provides light cover, these hormigons in the back here would be receiving the benefit of light cover from this tactical marine, even though they're not actually hiding behind anything. As a rule mechanic, it's probably fine. You can... Imagine that there's debris strewn around and the Hormagants are taking cover behind it, but it doesn't really play as fluidly in my head. That's why I like to use the obstacle cover a little bit more because it actually requires you to hide behind the obstacle to get the benefits. Now, one thing to keep in mind about light and heavy cover is that when you allocate a saving throw as the result of an attack to a model with the benefit of that cover, you can still take the plus one save even if not all the members of your unit are inside the cover. However, you will have to allocate to the models who are receiving that particular benefit, which means that if you fail the save, you'll have to remove that model. So, for example, if this tactical marine was attacking my Hormagants, despite the fact that these three in the front here are clearly not in cover, when he shoots them, I could take my first five saves with the cover bonus included, because every time I fail one of those saves, I will just remove one of the Hormagants in cover. Once those models are dead and I continue to take saves, I would take them on their normal saves for the models that are outside of cover. And this is totally up to the defending player, so you can choose to take your worst saves if you want to kill those models, or you can choose to take your better saves if you're in cover. Now let's talk about dense cover. And dense cover is a whole different can of worms. It works totally differently than any other types of cover. It's actually even weird that it's considered cover at all. 
What Dunce Cover does is it gives you a minus one penalty to hit if either you're inside the area of the Dunce Cover or the attacking model does not have any clean lines of fire to the defending model that do not pass over the dense terrain. So, for example, let's say I'm shooting this tactical marine at these gene stealers. These two gene stealers would theoretically be receiving the benefit of dense cover, and this one would as well, since my line of fire, I probably choose to draw it from this corner of his base, would, as you can see, pass over the dense terrain here. However, he has lines of fire that can be traced to the entire bases of these two gene stealers without passing through the dense which means that he will not suffer the minus one to hit penalty from the terrain feature. One thing to keep in mind is that when drawing your lines of fire for dense cover, it doesn't matter which models you draw them to in the defending unit. So I could have models in this gene stealer unit that are, for example, out of range or line of sight. And if I can trace my lines of fire to them without it passing over the dense, I will still ignore it. You have to have either your entire unit behind or within the dense terrain feature in order for you to get the benefit of being minus one to be hit. Now you can ignore dense cover if either you are within an area terrain feature with the dense cover keyword and you're shooting at enemies that would be benefiting from it as a result of that terrain feature, or if they're getting the benefit of dense cover from an obstacle and you're within three inches of that obstacle. So in this case, despite the fact that the gene stealers are inside the dense cover because the ultramarine is also inside. He would be ignoring it when he shoots at them. This isn't the case for light and heavy cover. You'd still get the benefits of those if you're inside an area terrain that the attacker is also inside. Now, just before we wrap up the discussion on dense cover, I figured that looking at the description of how dense cover works so far, the question's probably really in your head. It seems so difficult to actually get the benefit of dense cover. Trevi, how how possibly could dense cover ever come into effect in my game of Warhammer 40,000, the exciting sci-fi miniatures battle game? And the answer, dear viewer, is it's mostly big vehicles. If you're not trying really hard specifically to get dense cover on your unit of infantry or your big 10 or 20 man blob of dudes if they haven't basically sat all their butts in the dense cover to ensure that you get the minus one it's usually pretty easy for your opponent to pick a line of fire that finds at least one of them that isn't in dense and then is not minus one to hit them during that shooting step that said big tanks and stuff usually have a lot harder time any single model units dense cover makes it much more difficult for them to shoot each other so if we take uh, this extra crane on the side here and he wants to shoot this razor back, we'll pick, I guess, the best line of fire would be from this corner. But unfortunately, he's definitely going to go through that dense cover shooting at the razor back. So he's going to be minus one and the razor back shooting back is going to be the same. Even if we like shuffle this razor back out a little bit, if basically any line here goes through the dense it's going to apply minus one to hit for at least the exocrine so the exocrine would pick this corner for its line of fire and be like oh crap i can't see his back tread with my with my line of fire so i'm gonna be minus one to hit the razor back most often dense cover is going to affect vehicle or big artillery battles that's where it's going to come into play for the most part whether that's thematically appropriate for what dense cover is trying to do i don't know but at least that's how it works out on the table. And honestly, it's fine. It's kind of a cool effect to have to play around during the game. Now, a couple weird caveats about the dense cover rule that I feel like I should bring up because I know somebody in the comments will if I don't. First off, dense cover doesn't explicitly say that if you are inside it, you get the benefits of dense cover. But because it's based on lines of fire, you will always be getting the benefit of it if you're overlapping the terrain. Essentially, these gene stealers are inside the dense, and when I try to trace my line of fire, I have to trace it to the entirety of the target's base without it crossing over top of the area terrain. And since I cannot do that because their base is, it itself is over top of the terrain, they will be getting the benefit. Also, the way the rule is written, technically, if you are inside a piece of dense cover, every other piece of terrain on the table then becomes dense cover for you. No one knows why this rule is written this way, but also no one plays it that way. In this case, for example, if I am inside a piece of dense cover and I'm shooting out of it, then I would receive minus one to hit because of this obstacle. It's bizarre and weird, and there was a designer's note that implied that it's not supposed to work that way. So it, while it's something I would ask your local community or your tournament organizer about, most of the time, I think you're safe to ignore that rule. 
Dense Cover also has a three inch height restriction for it to apply. Like the obscuring height restriction, it doesn't make any sense. If you're not three inches tall, don't put the dense cover keyword on your terrain. You and your opponent just agree on what keywords things have. So you could just agree not to give that thing the dense cover keyword if it's too short. It, it's, a, it's a stupid rule. But anyway, that is the end of talking about terrain rules of obscuring and dense cover and light cover and heavy cover. All the covers covered. A new episode of Rules Everybody Got Wrong is going to be available soon. Big thanks to all of the feedback from that video. A lot of people coming in with suggestions of weird rules in Warhammer 40k that they see a lot of people misplaying. And we're going to talk about them. If you have any weird rules like that, or you have any questions about the terrain rules that we talked about in this video, go ahead and throw that comment down below. I will try to answer it, and if I don't, maybe I'll put it in the next video. That'd be pretty cool. Anyway, thanks again for watching all the way to the end, and a big thanks, as always, to my patrons over at patreon.com slash tacticaltortoise. If you want to support the channel and support all of these fun and informative videos that I make, you can head on over to patreon.com slash tacticaltortoise to join them. You get some sweet perks, too. You get early access to videos. There's less ads on them. Sometimes there's bloopers and extra commentary and stuff. I'm actually going to put some extra commentary in this one and talk about about some things in the end on the patron version. If you're not a patron, but you want to listen to that, then become a patron and you'll get it. Also, I'm going to be doing some patron exclusive videos in the very, very near future, so you can check those out as well. And if you're into T5S2 tournament stuff, you get early access to pods. That's cool. Also, YouTube members, you can join the YouTube members at the link down below. They get basically all of the same benefits, but also you get to use sweet emojis in YouTube. So you can join them at the link below the video next to the subscribe button and all those people are great and also all the patrons are great and also everyone who watched this point of the video is great because it's the end goodbye remember to keep it classy folks and have happy wargaming